Hello and welcome everybody. In this video we will discuss section 3.3.3 of the book and this section covers the control variance method for improving Monte Carlo estimates. This is one of several variance reduction methods and in this specific method what we will do is we will search for a expression similar to the one we want to estimate using Monte Carlo but which is simple enough that we can compute the result analytically and then we use Monte Carlo only to estimate the difference between what we have just computed analytically and the one the expression we originally wanted and that it turns out can sometimes reduce the error of Monte Carlo estimates. So let's see what we got. We still want to estimate expectations of the form expectation of f of x and the idea of the control variance method is that if we can compute a similar expectation analytically then we can make use of that fact and we use Monte Carlo just to estimate the difference. So the basic idea is straightforward. Say we can compute expectation of g of x analytically then we can write expectation f of x the thing we want as f of x minus g of x plus g of x. We split that into two parts, namely first the difference, expectation f of x minus g of x. That's the part which we will estimate using Monte Carlo. And then expectation g of x, that's the bit we assume we know how to compute. And that first part is estimated using Monte Carlo. And from that you can already see what we can do. We can just write the basic Monte Carlo estimate here. So estimate that an important sampling will then be 1 over n sum j from 1 to n f of xj minus g of xj. That is the standard Monte Carlo estimator for the first expectation plus expectation g of x. So here we are going to plug in the value we already know. And this idea works if we have a function g which is similar enough to f that expectation g of x already does most of the work and which is simple enough that we can compute the expectation of g of x exactly. And then if f and g are similar to each other then that term here will be small. So the Monte Carlo error which occurs for this term will contribute less so we can get away with fewer steps because this small term will not contribute much to the error. Well, let's see how that goes. So first, there is a result which goes with this, which is proposition 332 in the book. And that tells us about the mean squared error. Proposition mean squared error of the important sampling estimate is 1 over n variance of f of x minus g of x. And I give a proof in the book, but that is really straightforward because what we do is just reuse what we have already learned about Monte Carlo estimates. And we are estimating the function f minus g of x. We know what the mean squared error is. Namely, it is variance of f minus g of x divided by n. That's what I wrote here. And then we add this term, but the second term is just a constant which we know, though there is no extra component to the error here. So you can read the proof in steps in the book, but it really redoes just what we did in the first section. And we could have just cited the result from the first section here. So I would argue the proof of proposition 3.32 is not actually necessary. Here. Good, that is one thing. And the other thing is the question, how is this actually used? And let me just do an example here. Example, let's say x is standard normal distributed and we want to compute the expectation of cosine of x. I suspect probably if you try hard you could do that analytically but it will not be totally easy and here let's just pretend we don't know the analytical answer and let's try how we can use the important sampling method. So what do we need to do? We need to first find a function g, so f of x is cosine of x here. And we need to find the function g which is close to f of x but where we can compute the expectation. So that's what cosine looks like. And now we need the function g which is similar to f and where we can compute the expectation. And one key observation is it really needs to be similar only in the area where x actually takes values because we are plugging in IID copies of x. So it doesn't really matter what g does in areas where x doesn't go. So x is standard normal distributed so that is close to zero somehow. So we really need to match f only in the vicinity of zero. 
so what function can we use? Well, if you look at that, that may look a bit like an upside down parabola. So we could try to fit here a parabola and we just make it so that it fits in this point exactly. So how would we do that? Maybe the easiest we could do is to do Taylor approximation around zero. So let me just remind you of Taylor approximation. It goes like that. F of x plus h is approximately equal to f of x plus h times f prime of x plus h squared over 2 times f double prime of x. And you can go further, but let's stick with second order here. If I apply this to cosine, I want to develop this around zero, so x will be zero. Then I have f of zero is one and cosine prime of zero, the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So that is minus sine of zero is zero. And then we finally need to work out what is the second derivative. So we do cosine double prime. The second derivative is, well, it's the first derivative of minus sine. So it's minus cosine of zero. Again, the minus is here. And then sine has derivative cosine. So it's minus cosine of zero. So that is minus one. So there we have our derivatives. And now let's plug that in. So what we get is cosine of x is approximately equal to cosine of zero plus x times cosine prime of zero plus x squared over two cosine double prime of zero. And if I plug in what I just found is cosine zero is one plus x times zero. The derivative of cosine we see it in the picture two, it's flat at zero, so the derivative is zero. And finally we get x squared over two times second derivative is minus one. And that also fits well because we see we need the parabola opening downwards. So if we put that together here, the parabola I want to use is g of x equals one plus zero minus x squared over two. Let's see whether we can work out the analytical expectation of g of x. So first x is standard normal distributed and therefore we know directly expectation of x is zero and variance of x is one. That is the one here. And there is now a trick to get expectation of x squared. Variance of x is expectation of x squared, the thing we want, minus expectation of x squared. And if we solve for expectation of x squared, we see that variance of x plus expectation of x squared. And in our case, we get one plus zero squared is one. So that's easy enough. And then expectation of g of x equals expectation of, let me just check, one minus x squared over two is one minus expectation of x squared over two. And with the result we just found, we see that is one minus one half equals one half. So that was easy enough. And that formula covers the known part of the expectations. So the expectation of g of x for our g and our x is one half. And the other thing we need to do is we need to work out the expectation of f minus g of x. And as we said, we are going to do that using Monte Carlo. And I will show how this is done in RStudio. So our aim is estimate the expectation of cosine of x, where x is standard normally distributed using the control variance method. And as usual, I want to do a quick Monte Carlo estimate for comparison. So we pick a sample size, say a million samples, we generate random numbers and the Monte Carlo estimate would just be mean cosine x and the root mean squared error would be square root of variance of cosine x over n to so 0.0004. Okay, that was for comparison. Now using control variance. So what we do is we subtract this function g. So let's just for tidiness define that as a function in r also. So the function we had was one minus cosine x over two. 
And just to double check what I showed you, g is hopefully an approximation to cosine x. So let's take a sequence of values again, say in the range minus 3, 3, with, I don't know, 100 values. And then we can do a plot of x against cosine x with lines. Looks like this, and I make the margins smaller, so that looks like a better plot. So with lines, I can add a line to an existing plot, and I make it red, just that we can tell them apart. That did not work, and the reason is I made a mistake when I defined g, we should have done x squared over 2. So I redefine g, and now it works. You see, the red curve g of x is close to the black curve close to zero, and the standard normal distributed values will typically be close to zero, so hopefully that is all good. Now, what do we need to do? The estimate is now mean f of x minus g of x, so cosine x minus g of x, plus the one half we worked out analytically, which is the expectation of g of x, is 0 0.606, let me just compare that. That looks consistent. Standard Monte Carlo got 0 0.60681. Here we got 0 0.6065. So that is certainly comparable. And the root mean squared error is variance now of cosine x minus g of x, which is smaller in quantity. It's just the gap between the red and the black curve. And again, divided by n. That is 0 0.0003 compared to 0.0004. So that is not as large a reduction as I had hoped it would be, but still it is smaller. Let me just diagnose this. That is small near zero. Then using capital X, variance cosine X minus G of X is 0.09. Variance cosine X is 0.19. So that is about a factor of two. And I store that in a variable, that in another variable, I just want to work out the ratio. Ah, so I believe that result is correct, and the example just leads to a smaller reduction than I had hoped. And the reason I believe that is correct is that the variance has gone down only by a factor of 2, from essentially 0 0.2 to 0 0.1. So the root mean squared error should go down by a factor of 1 over square root of 2, and that number here is close to being 1 over square root of 2, so that is about the expected reduction in error. If one wanted to get a better estimate, one could try to approximate cosine with the fourth order polynomial, which will reduce this gap a bit more, which will further reduce the variance, and the expectation of the fourth power of a normal distribution you can still work out or look up on Wikipedia, but we are not going to do that for here. We will just conclude with what we have done. So that concludes the main part of what we need to learn about the control variance method. There is another video to come where we will consider a more advanced aspect, namely a slight generalization of the control variance method discussed so far.